How many stocks should you have? When you ask this question, you'll get a wide range of answers. It's a nuanced topic, but most would say you need to have a few stocks in each category or sector of the market to be properly diversified. The idea behind stock portfolio diversification comes from what's called modern portfolio theory. It suggests you must be properly diversified to preserve wealth, reduce volatility, and maximize returns. And I do see merit in it. But there's many investors that disregard the traditional guidance of being properly diversified because their overall knowledge of the stock market and psyche allows them to. And in this video, I'll go over how and why they're able to do this, my personal approach to diversification, and how many stocks I think is best for the average retail investor. My name is Christian. Welcome to my channel. My passion is personal finance, and I hope to inspire you to create a path to financial freedom. Real quick, please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It helps my channel grow and reach more people. So with respect to maintaining an individual stock portfolio, the traditional guidance you'll commonly get adheres to modern portfolio theory. Generally, that guidance would be, you must have diversified exposure to multiple sectors of the stock market, no more than 5% in any one position, a good mix of stocks, bonds, and maybe some commodities, and... This approach suggests with a well-balanced, diversified portfolio, if some of the assets fall due to market conditions, others should rise an equal amount in compensation. A basic example of this would be the classic 60-40 portfolio, which is a portfolio constructed of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. The idea being, if stocks are down, your bonds should go up, and vice versa. The balance of assets is supposed to provide diversity, which reduces volatility, minimizing downside, thereby optimizing returns. Remember, this is a theory though, and it's really being tested in the current market conditions. But broken down further, a version of the 60-40 portfolio could be 40% large cap stocks and 20% small cap stocks, making up your total of 60%. And that could be a mix of both US stocks and international stocks. And then 20% commodities and 20% bonds, making up your remaining 40%. So that's the traditional approach. And with this method, you could easily end up with 20 to 30 stocks across multiple sectors and maybe some bonds and some exposure to commodities. Now a less complicated method could simply look like only owning eight to 10 stocks, eight to 10 stocks you are very familiar with. And indeed 10 stocks may not be enough to cover all sectors of the market, balancing out your portfolio properly. But many of the best investors in the world suggest for a retail investor, that may not be such a bad thing. The Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett says, diversification as practiced generally makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. It's a protection against ignorance. And in his personal investing portfolio, he only owns a couple stocks, the vast majority being Berkshire Hathaway, of course. And of the almost 50 holdings within Berkshire Hathaway, Apple makes up 40%. One stock makes up almost half the portfolio, completely contrary to traditional diversification. Legendary investor Peter Lynch calls diversification diversification. Diversification is a big mistake. I call it diversification. But, uh, you buy this thing that might balance this other thing and they both go down. It, uh, so I don't believe in diversification at all. He says the traditional approach of buying an array of assets across multiple sectors for the sake of reducing risk is foolish. He wouldn't invest in stocks across different sectors to balance his portfolio in that traditional sense. He would only buy a company if it met his criteria as a good stock, not because he was lacking exposure to a particular sector for balance. Monish Pabrai, famous Buffett Munger copycat investor who manages almost a billion dollars, only has two positions currently, one stock and one real estate investment trust. If you really have a thorough understanding of the company you buy, like you should, and you're looking to hold it for the long term, regardless of the near-term volatility, if you did proper due diligence, it should appreciate in the long term. And ultimately, this more concentrated approach could lead to better returns. It certainly did for Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett. Having a thorough, traditional, diversified stock portfolio may mean owning over 20 different positions. It's hard to keep up with 20 plus companies. To do it the right way, you need to be in tune with the earnings reports, annual reports, decisions the company leadership makes, and what competitors are up to. That becomes more and more challenging the more stocks you own. Understand, the concept of diversification doesn't have to be textbook, and it should be based on your personal risk tolerance and preference. As long as you're convicted for the long term, I really think keeping it simple and taking the more concentrated approach is the best for the average retail investor that strives to maintain a long-term individual stock portfolio. 
Now, what I do and what I think is best for the majority of people is to max out your 401k and an IRA first before you invest in individual stocks. Diversification is naturally built into most 401k funds, and and if you want to own a few individual stocks, fine. I just stick to a few big companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, and Costco. These companies are industry leaders with healthy balance sheets, and they make more money than most countries. This is how I invest. The majority of my investments are in index funds within my retirement accounts, and then I have a few stocks in my individual stock portfolio. Because I have exposure to hundreds of companies in the ETFs that cover most sectors of the stock market, I don't have to worry that I'm not diversified within my individual stock portfolio. Most of my stocks are large cap. I don't have small cap stocks. I only have one international stock. As a matter of fact, Google makes up 21% of my individual stock portfolio, and I'm okay with the high concentration in one or two stocks. It's just much easier to track and stay up to date with five or six individual companies, vice 20. Now, an even easier way to achieve sufficient diversification is to just take an all ETF approach. There's nothing wrong with this, and as a matter of fact, this approach is more likely to net a better return for the majority of investors. A very popular all ETF approach is the three fund portfolio. So that would be a total U.S. stock market fund, a total bond market fund, and an international fund. So plenty of diversification in this setup. And as per the design of this portfolio, if the U.S. stock market is down, maybe your bonds are up and international stocks are up. That's not particularly how the global markets are behaving right now, but you get the idea. And if you need to rebalance, depending on what's going on in the markets, it's really easy because you're only adjusting within three funds. And if you don't want exposure to bonds or international stocks, you can just modify that three fund portfolio to your preference. You could substitute the international fund, for example, for a fund focused around real estate if you wanted. This is a great approach for both retirees and people still accumulating and building their nest egg. In my opinion, the topic of how many stocks you should have really comes down to your preference based on stock market knowledge, psychology, and risk tolerance. I think the KISS principle is really important here, and ultimately, what I think is most important for retail investors is to ensure you're diversified, but don't overcomplicate it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.